All right. <clears throat> Welcome to today's uh, training. Somebody's knocking. Mm -hmm. Somebody's knocking. So, welcome to today's training. <clears throat> my name is Engineer David. Uh, I'm a project control specialist and a project planning engineer uh, in oil and gas facility projects, um, gas turbine, construction, and IT. So, presently, the program manager for ASPOG um, Nigeria. So, you're welcome for to today's class. So, let's just uh, look at what we have pretty much. Um, as regards to um, our, uh, you know, our topic, which is a project management analytics, performance management systems, and project reporting, you know, pieces integration with MXL. So let's just. Uh, are you seeing? Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So what we're we'll doing? Um, we're talking about, um, you know, this course is very, 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 very extensive and uh I, I needed us to pay attention because it's more we're going to be doing more data analytics in fact analytical aspects so you are privileged because you know why i say you are privileged that anal analy uh, that analyst their own is just you give them data they analyze but you as a project and um, um, working the pmo or uh, or project coordinator you 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 create your data yourself you clean your data yourself and you analyze it yourself so you see the rule is not just something we'll do that so but like as usual we'll always uh take from our theoretical aspects to, to have that foundational knowledge um as um regards to you know uh, project management analytics performance management system and project reporting so i will teach us how to build performance management system that's pms and then um, i will teach us how to do reporting you know in project management so that's just what this um, training is all about. So the module one talks about the introduction to project management analytics, which we have an um, overview of project management analytics and their importance in project management. Uh, we have a best, uh, sorry, we have project management uh, metrics, key performance in the, um, in the indicators. I will show us that, the metrics. Then we have the analytics um, frameworks and tools for project management. Then best practice for project management analytics we'll get to to know about you know all this then the model two talks about the data management uh, and visualization you know how to collect data uh, that's data collection management and analysis anal analysis for project management data visualization and dashboard design are uh, talking about best and practice for data management and visualization in project management using data to inform project decisions so you agree with me that your data is uh, mainly to inform project decisions to, as, uh, as regards to taking decisions or thereabouts. So your data does that for you. Um, the model three talks about the project performance management system. We we'll learn how to, I will teach us how to create that. Uh, that's the, the PMS. Then also overview of a project performance management systems, developing a performance management system for a project, defining performance metrics and then targets. So we'll do this. Then measuring projects and performance using performance management system. So it's a whole lot. Then the module four, I just have to have this uh, resource management analysis. You know, resource management in project management, identifying and allocating project resources, and then um, resource utilization analytics. So it is very. You agree with me that these are very very deep, uh, you know, content. And um, I want us not just after this class, we should practice this thing because it's it would be a great joy for me you know, uh, seeing us practicing this thing, excelling in it, that means I didn't waste my time. It's not just to come and get the certificates because many people, their own is just to get certificates. Certificate is not the, is, what is the main deal? What the main deal is, can you deliver? Not come and get certificates, honestly. So when we fix time, I wanted us to come at that particular time. It is very, very important. Certificate, I, 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 I validate your certificate based on what you can offer based on what you can do with what you have learned not just certificates and then um, you i mean we are not yet um you know good in that aspect so please let's try as much as possible when we fix six o'clock we'll come six o'clock so i will move ahead right and then um, always practice it is very very important and essential so 
we're moving direct so i'll share this material with us this uh uh this uh book with us i'll share with us so project management analytics so uh a, a, a data driven approach to making um uh, rational and effective project decisions so written by um hajit hajit singh sing 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 H or sing all right so primary analytics data driven approach uh, to making rational uh, effective project decisions okay so Ajit Singh is, is a master of business administration as a PMP CSM so data processing manager three you know level three so state of California so I will give us this material to help us so let's just proceed to the main let's look at the contents look at the content so you agree with me that this content is very very rich this content is very very rich. so project management analytics what is analytics why is analytics important in project management uh, how can project managers use analytics in project management um project management analytics approach uh then summary then key key terms then case study city well this is just um a case study city of a uh, medieval <clears throat> uses statistics approach to estimate cost for its um, pilot projects <clears throat> so case study questions and answer questions here yeah. okay chapter review and discussion questions and biography so then chapter two talks about the data and the data driven the, um, the decision making characteristics of good um, decision decision making factors we'll get to see that and understand what it is and importance of decisive uh, project managers uh automation and the management of decision making uh decision making process then data driven decision making <clears throat> data driven decision making process challenges garbage in garbage out summary so we'll get to see all this then the, the chapter three talks about the project management framework what is project what is the project? And then how is the project and um, different from operations you know we talked about that in primary piece fundamental primary piece is a uh you know training but so we get we just get to see that and i believe also i talked about the the uh, portfolio management as well as the pmo so here we have a project versus a program versus portfolio we talked about that in our former training that's in the primary piece is fundamental so if you have not uh watched the video please you can check you know you can just check this channel to uh, get this you know so we'll talk about uh, the project management office the pmo talk about the project life cycle p and plc uh talks about the project uh, management life cycle all right pm lc we've discussed about these things but we'll still throw more light more for proper understanding and we also talk about the process within um, PM and uh, LC, the process within. Then we talk about the work breakdown structure. You see how it is connected, you know. So we are not leaving anything behind. That's the BBS system development life cycle summary. Then the chapter three has to do with the um, introduction to analytics concepts, tools, and techniques. You know, I I I I made mention of um, ITTO as an um, inputs and um, tools and um, techniques. And outputs you know i made mention of that in our previous um training so if you have not uh, uh if you're not acquainted with that you can check the previous video watch it through you will get to know what uh, uh that's indicates so um chapter four talks about the that's part three so chapter four talks about the statistics fundamentals the basic probability distribution so Data is all about data management is just all about a you know in, in such a way that uh, you manage your data to to make decision. It's all about making decision. When you manage data, data is just for decision making, right? So that is on that um, notes um, talks about uh, statistic basics. <laughs> this one will take us back to our university days. So most of those things they taught us are very very important too. You know, especially when you practice program management, you know that all these things are very, very, very vital. You just have to start recalling. Talk about probability distribution, mean, variance, and, and standard deviation of uh, binomial distribution. 
Then Poison distribution, normal distribution, confidence in uh, intervals, summary. We we'll see all these things. Uh, then about the chapter five and uh, talks about statistics fundamentals. Uh, two hypothesis. There's correlation and linear regression. So what is hypothesis? Statistics hypothesis testing, uh, rejection region, uh, disease disease test versus the T test. We will see that correlation and statistics. So um, linear regression. So I'm going to try as much as possible to summarize this um, whole book, but in detail, give it, uh, give our throw more lights so that we can have the basic understanding of what we are to, you know, what we are to do uh, as regards to program management analytics in our projects. What is expected of us? So chapter six talks about the analytics hierarchy process. Um, let me just go chapter seven, lean six sigma. Uh, part four, application of analytics concept tools and techniques in project management decision making is very very important. Then statistics approach in project management. Uh, let me just move ahead. Then talks about the project uh, making decision with analytics, hierarchy process. Uh, chapter 10, Lean Six Sigma application in project management. So maybe, okay, fine. Part, part five, that's the appendix, and then I think that's all acknowledgements. All right, so we'll just start. Uh, this is about the author, about um, Harijit, um, Harijit uh, Singh. Singh, Singh H, right? So that's just uh, all about him. You can, when I send this uh, document, you can read about him. Is a professional in this field and then um, he knows what it is so chapter one project management analytics uh, objective after reading this uh, chapter you should be able to should be familiar with the definition of analytics difference between analytics and analysis purpose of using analytics in project management which is very very important application of analytics in project management statistic and uh, statistical approach to project management analytics lean six sigma approach to project management analytics analytics hierarchy process approach to project management analytics so 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 that is that uh, let's see okay that's the objective all right so we start effective project management entails operative management of uncertainty on the projects. This requires the project managers today to use analytical techniques to monitor and control the uncertainty, as well as to estimate project schedule and costs more accurately with analytics-driven prediction. So uh, Bharat Gara, Bharat Gara and uh, line manager as at IMB agrees uh, today Project manager, project manager needs to report the project metrics. Very, very important. I will teach us, I will show us those metrics that you need to report on in our schedule. So project manager need to report the project metrics in terms of analytical certainty. Analytics-based project metrics can, is, can essentially enable the project manager to uh, measure, observe, and analyze project performance objectively and make rational uh project decision with analytical certainty rather than making vague decision with subjective uncertainty. So you see the main importance of uh, uh, analytics, right? You see the main importance of analytics in our projects, right? So uh, that is just on that note. Um, so this chapter presents you an overview of the analytics-driven approach to project management. So what is analytics? Very, very important. Analytics or data analytics. See now, analytics or data analytics can be defined as the systematic quantitative analysis of data or statistics or to, uh, to obtain meaningful information for better decision making. You see, analytics is all about acquiring data to make decisions. That's the reason why you are doing analysis in, with your data. Otherwise, uh, you wouldn't have even you wouldn't have gone that far to even do anal analytics in your um, project uh, management um, you know um, data 
we don't have analyzed this data. So the reason why you're analyzing the data is to make decision and also report on the status of your projects, report what is happening. Through analytics, you'll be able to know what is happening in that project. You know, you know what is happening. You can predict what will happen, you know, you know, in that regard, you, in, you, through analytics, you can be able to know, you know, all these things. So it involves the collective use of various analytical methodologies, including, but not limited to statistical and operational research methodologies, uh, Lean Six Sigma and software programming, right? Uh, the computation complexity of analytics may vary from low to very high. For example, big data. Uh, the, the the highly complex application usually utilize sophisticated algorithms based on statistical, mathematical, and computer science knowledge. You see, so it is very essential uh, because the high complex application uses usually con utilize the sophisticated algorithm based on this uh, you know uh, uh, um, knowledge um, area that they mention. You know statistical, mathematical, and the computer science, uh, you know, knowledge. So uh, what well, then, move ahead, analytics versus analysis. Take note of this. Analysis and analytics are similar sounding terms, but they are not the same thing. So when you hear the word analytics, analysis, is it two, they are two different, two different things. They are similar, but they are not the same thing. They do have the same differences, right? Both are important to project managers. The project manager can use analysis to understand the status, the status quo that may reflect, you know, the results of their efforts to achieve certain objective. You see, so uh, they can use um, analytics to identify specific trend. You know, when we, when we get to when I when I, when our teachers S curve. Uh, SCOV is more like a trend analysis. You see that now. You're able to see what has happened in the time past and what is happening in the present and what is uh, what will happen in the future. You'll be able to use because you're able to use that um, approach to determine what will or what has and what what is. You see what will, what has, and what is. You'll be able to know through this method. That is the S-curve. It's, it's called a trend analysis. You'll be able to see what is happening over time. So I move ahead. I said both, uh, both are important to project managers. They, 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 okay. they can use uh, analysis to understand the status quo that may reflect the results of, the, of their effort to achieve certain objectives. Right? They can use analytics to identify specific trends or pattern in data to understand to sorry or data under analysis so that they can predict or forecast the future outcome of or behaviors based on the past trend so this this alone is uh, is just your s curve the s curve is your trend analysis application which you use to identify what has happened in the time past, oh, in this time, we are able to achieve so, 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 so percent of work as planned, right? Let me accept somebody, please. Okay. Please hold on. Okay. Please hold on. So, like I said, I said the S curve uh, enables you to know what has happened in the time past, and also, you know, give you uh, uh, an orientation of what it, what is likely to happen, right? So you get to see that. Now, uh, let me go ahead. Uh, table 1.1 outlined the key differences between analytics and analysis. Now look at it, analytics versus analysis. That the um, criterion here, working definition, the 
the analytics. Analysis can be defined as a method. Analytics is a method to use, is a method to use the result of analysis. Analysis can be defined as a method to use the results of analysis to better predict customer or stakeholders' behavior. So that is that the analysis can be defined as the process of this um, 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 dissecting past gad, um, gathered data into pieces so that the current prevailing situation can be understood. You see the difference between analytics and analyt analysis. Analytics talks about, uh, you know, predict, predict, predict customer or stakeholders' behavior. That's the analytics. The analysis talks about, uh, you know, um, understanding the current situation, right? Understanding and this one talks about the predictive and understanding what is happening. There's the analysis. So now we talked about um, the other criterion. We have the dictionary definition. Per Miriam Webster Dictionary, analytics is the method of logical analysis. You see that now? Anal analytics is the method of logical analysis. Why um, the same um, dictionary again stated that analysis is the separation of a whole into its component parts to learn about those parts. I love this definition. So you see that now analysis is, 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 is the separation of a whole into its components, into its component parts to learn about those parts. You're separating different things into different components to learn about each of them, each of them. That's analysis, each of them. You see that? So we have um, the time period under the criterion. Analytics looks forward to project, to project uh, right, the future or predict an outcome based on the past performance as of the time of analysis. Right? Then analysis here presents a historical view, a historical view of the project performance as of the time of analysis is there any question if you have any question please i need you to ask your question before i forge ahead i don't want us to be confused we have a lot to do it's a whole lot like i said if you have any question please raise up your hands and then um, ask your question hello hello if you have a question please Engineer Michael. Yes. Okay, please uh, ask your question if you have a question. Okay, I will when it comes up. You don't have any question right now. No, not for now. What about um 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 Angela Promise? Yeah, I don't have a question for now. If I have a question, I'll ask. Okay. You are giving us preamble now, so we are following you up. Okay. All right. Thank you. So yeah. I'll move ahead to um, the criterion examples. Uh, criterion, we have the examples and analytics. Remember, we're talking about the difference between analytics and analysis. So analytics here, use analytics, <clears throat> use analytics to predict. Analytics, use analytics to predict which functional area are more likely to show adequate um, um, adequate um, participation in future surveys so that a strategy can be developed to improve the future um, participation. See that? So analysis here, use analysis uh, to determine how many employees from each functional area of the organization par, uh, participate, uh, participated in a voice of... Uh, the workforce survey. So analysis, analytics. So we we'll move here, type of uh, analysis. We have the predictive type of analysis under criterion type of analysis. We have the predictive um, prediction of future audience behavior based on their past behavior, right? So we'll see that in SCOV, you know, when we, when we draft our SCOV, is an application on its own, but we'll see that and 
it's going to be more understandable. Uh, so um, the type of uh, analysis here again, we have them um, uh, under analysis, we have uh, the target, the target audience and uh, segmentation, target audience and um, target audience grouping based on multiple past behavior. You see that now. So you have a uh, predictive of future audience behavior based on their past behavior, target audience segment and uh, segmentation uh grouping based on multiple past behavior. You see that? So what are the tools? We have the tools. Uh, we have a statistical, mathematical, computer science, and lean C sigma tools and techniques based on algorithm with advanced logic, sophisticated predictive analytics software tools. So these are the tools, statistical, mathematical, for computer science, lean six sigma. There are tools, right, that you use to do analytics, right? Analytics. These are tools. So, what are the tools for analysis? Business intelligence tools, such as structural query language SQL, right? SQL, where you have your um, D data DDL data data definition language, data manipulation language, data control language, and data transactional language. So, in that aspect, that's just SQL, right? For analysis, you use SQL to do analysis, right? Then for analytics. You use a mathematical, um, 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 statistical, computer science, and Lean Six Sigma tool. So you can study about those tools, you know, based on if you want to draft your do analytics. But we use them um, Excel as well, right? Excel also is good to for, to do our analytics, right? We use that I am Excel, right? So we're going to be using Excel, Microsoft Excel, to do our analytics, analyze our data, right? So the type of activities that are under analysis, right? Under analysis, <clears throat> uh, identify specific data patterns, right? In this case, under analytics, develop, um, right? Yeah, under analysis, under analytics is uh, identify specific data pattern. Under analysis, develop the business case. Then here we have um, derive meaningful inferences from data patterns. Yeah elicit requirements then the, uh, we have them um, use um inferences to develop um regressive chart predictive models right so here we have um document requirement conduct risk assessment model business and process develop business architecture right all the things you can break it down and study about them but i just want to give us uh, like i say a summary of this book then we we'll walk down the practical aspect. Uh, it is not enough to just study the book without him practicalizing it. You know, all the things we've been reading here, I mean, I've, like I've been studying here right now, can be summarized in Excel. Just one page, one page, to be able to you know analyze your data. That's it. So under ana um, under uh, analytics. Uh, we still have developed um, a SharePoint list to track key performance indicators, run SQL queries on data warehouse to extract relevant data for reporting, run simulation to investigate different uh, scenarios, use statistical method to predict future sales based on past sales. So it, it, this, this not necessarily sales, use a um, statistical method to predict future performance of your project, right? Uh, based on the past performance, you can use it that way instead of, uh, I mean, sales, right? Instead of using sales. So that's that. So why, why is analytics important in project management? Why is analytics important in project management? Although switching, let me let me let me switch it off. Uh, I would like to ask us why is analytics important in project management? I want this this class to be interactive. So, engineer, engineer, promise. Uh, please, can you just uh, tell us why you think analytics is important in project management from your own point of view? Before we move ahead, from your own point of view, why do you think analytics is important in project management and to analyze our data? Why do you think it's important? Yeah, it's very important because uh, when you have 
uh, all this data analysis it will help you to know how the project is performing okay it also help you to see if you can make changes as you progress with your project mm -hmm. so uh, it, it has a lot of uh, uh, important it has a lot of uh, use so it helps the project manager to take decision too okay good so that's okay. much i can say okay and then Michael, can you add something to that and then mike Hello, Sir, i'm here can you can you add something to that uh let me try you know um analyzing data okay. helps you to know let me use the layman terms helps you to know where you are coming from okay. perhaps where you are and perhaps we go to in future. Mm -hmm. Let me use that layman term. So in project, if you do your analysis, it helps you to, you, like you said, we can predict ahead of time. We can also improve better how we have done maybe what we have done before. So I, I, I this is just the simple explanation I can give. Okay. So what what are the difference between analytics and analysis? From what you have uh, showcased to us, analytics involves analyzing uh, an outcome from analysis. Why analysis is about uh, analysis is like breaking down a whole uh, quantum of uh, I, don't, I want to borrow this language from chemistry when you split an atom into pieces. So the analysis is like breaking down the big picture into section or segment, okay. analyze each of the sections and segments, and bring out whatever you want to get there. So a product of that analysis is what you will now take to analytic aspect. Okay, that's to work on. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. That means we are following the class. We are following. We are following. That's 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 brilliant. Thank you so much, Sir Angela Michael. So. Uh, why is um, analytics important in project management? Although switching to data-driven approach and utilizing the available analytical tools makes perfect sense. You know, most most project managers either or not, either or not, are aware of an analytical approach or they do not feel comfortable moving away from their largely subjective legacy approach to project management decision making. Their, their hesitation is related to lack of training in the analytical tools, techniques, and process. So, before you can functionally, uh, before you can um, effectively analyze your project data, you need to know how to use these tools. That's what it is. You need to know how to use these tools, even how to store your data. Primavera PCs is a database. Of course, your data is stored there, right? How to now extract that data is another is another skill for you then knowing the, the the tools you will use to analyze that data is another is another skill so when we're able to drag those data from pieces we move down to microsoft excel we will now you know you know paste it there i will now start i will show us the key metrics the things that we have to report on everything that is tied to that you know data which, which is um, uh, very, very important to drive our decision making. We will see that, right? So it's very important and essential when you have even, uh, you, you, you agree with me that um, analytics involve strong sense of reasoning, you know, strong sense of reasoning. Analytics involves strong sense of reasoning. You don't just analyze, analyze data. It's, I mean, I don't know the word to use. Um, you 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 have to be you have to be uh i don't know i don't know the word i don't know the right word to use i don't need the right but i know you have to be you know uh updated in the latest trend of kind of tools to use in analyzing that will give you in i mean realistically what your your uh your your data is saying right that is just what your data is is what your data is the, the message your data is passing out that is just on that note so you need to have a st strong sense of reasoning in that um, note. So um, to make your own your decision, 
that is just that so let's go ahead uh okay i think there's something here to talk about uh their hesitation is related to lack of training in the analytical tools technologies and processes right so most project manager management book only mention these tools techniques and processes in passing and do not discuss them adequately in an easily adaptable format even the project management body of knowledge guide which is considered the global standard for project management processes does not provide adequate details on an analytics focused approach yes of course it's true they didn't provide details you know on it can be just summarized in provide details that's why it's very very important you see that type of analytics is a different different um, um job role entirely so for you to become an effective project manager you need to know that analytics because you would analyze data you analyze data those those data you are going to generate it yourself because your resources the timeline the name of the task all those things are data you understand all those things are data the the dates the uh, 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 um, the activities the duration whatever it is they are all data you need to analyze it right so that is just that they say even the project management body of knowledge um, guide pm book which is considered the, the global standard for project management process does not provide adequate details does not mean doesn't provide detail but not adequate details on analytical focus approach so it provides but not adequate right so that's that uh the high availability of analytical technology today can enable project managers to use the analytics analytics and um, paradigm you know to break down the process and system in complex projects to predict their behavior and outcomes you see that now knowing analytics eh, knowing analytics and knowing how to analyze project data gives you an upper hand that is just it, it gives you an upper hand uh, and it makes you more more reliable in your organization because not only your project data means if you can analyze in fact if you can analyze project data you can analyze any data any data any data that is it once you can you can carefully analyze do your analytics eh? analytics in using a, a project data to analyze it you can be able to analyze any data because number one you are the one generating your data nobody is giving you data or the employers are data analysts you just be analyzing data that you did not even know where they came from you just work on based on instruction but this one you are the one to give yourself instruction because you're the one that created it so you would want to now produce this uh, uh, do um, do the analytics analyze those data to present to stakeholders that this you will even now be able to defend it that this is what it is at this point in time we're able to make so 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 and now we're able to you can be able to even i mean suggest and give them you know make decision as regards to your <clears throat> data presentation you see that now so that is just one important of knowing um and program management analytics you know very very important you can be able to function as a as data analyst effectively what you just need is just to master the tools once you can master the tools like they mentioned this the sql which is the structural query language under uh, uh, analysis right you'll be able to master then master microsoft excel and other bi tools like um, bar bi and all, that, and all the rest of them you're able to flow but as for this we'll be using just excel right to do our um analysis right so the tools the analytical tools we're going to be using microsoft excel to do our anal anal analysis so uh how can project managers use analytics in project management now analytics find its use in multiple areas throughout the project and project management life cycles analytics finds its use in project and in multiple areas throughout the projects and project management life cycles the key application of analytics in this context include but are not limited to the following number one we're looking at how can project managers use them analytics in program number one assessing feasibility <clears throat> which is analytics can be used to assess the feasibility of various alternatives so that a project manager can pick the best option. 
feasibility has to do it knowing knowing the the possibility of you know to know the the sorry to know the possibility of a particular thing analyze analytics can be used to assess the feasibility to know if it is possible or various alternative anything that anyone that is put based on various alternative so that the project manager can pick the best you right it's an option to pick the best you know best option that's that under how can project manager use them use them analytics in project management so the second one has to do with managing data overload right in our pieces like i said there's a lot of data in that pc so when we start analyzing those data now you understand that ah so there's a lot of data here we don't we have generated data but the truth is picking those data analyzing those data makes us more effective as a project coordinator or project or working in the pmo you it it, it doesn't just stop there that's why most people most of us that in uh, attend this, this training now well except they have that knowledge prior to this class but if not they are still like half big because they need to know the analytics how to analyze those data that they have already generated and how to even draw extract those data is very very important so um i've talked about the managing overload okay managing overload due to the contemporary internet age data overload has crippled project managers capability to capture meaningful information from mounting of data analytics can help project managers overload sorry overcome this issue analytics can help you overcome managing data overload you believe me it's very very accurate it will help you to overcome data overload no matter how big your data is no matter how cumbersome analyzing it will help you do you know that you can have data that can feel that can, that can feel about 100 page a lot of data but analyzing those data is just one page you'll be able to you know make your once you analyze it you can be able to see it visualize it in just one page am i communicating if 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 you agree just uh just you know answer if you agree what i'm saying just answer you have data filled up with filled up in many pages analyzing that data can just take one page once you analyze that data can take just one page and everybody will be able to know the outcome of what and what and or they will be able to know what is happening in that in that uh, project do you believe it do you agree with me hello house yes yes o okay so I agree. very well please i agree yeah, yeah. okay so that's what i'm saying you you can have multiple data data filled up can imagine your excel sh and, 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 and sheets can be of 100 100 sheets right 100 um, sheets right that feed up with data you can just analyze that data eh? when you, after analyzing that data you have it in just one 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 um, 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 spreadsheet it will be you can be able to see what is happening in that 100 sheets in just one spreadsheet that's how it's that's why data analytics is very very important very very important because what we have in our in is that there in fact data we have loaded we have already loaded our resources we have already created our activities we have, we have already um, input our um, duration we've already do you understand everything is there we have to draw these things and analyze so that we can be able to communicate to stakeholders that this is what what happened this is what is happening with our project at by, by so, so 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 they were in so 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 so, so percentage and you rate your project based on percentage and because everything just as it's planned planned is 100 percent so you are working to complete that 100 percent the project as a whole as scheduled is 100 percent planned 100 percent accurate it's no more than 100 percent you know we'll, we'll do that when we, when we start um, doing the analytic um the analytic aspects of it so we'll do that so it's just 100 percent we need to now uh what whatever we achieve over time you know should be able to match you know to be able to, to meet up to 100 percent the end date or the end time of that project should become to be 100 percent completed as it is planned i don't know if you understand if you if you if you want me to throw more light on that uh you can you can omit your mic before i forge ahead I hope, it is, I hope that is understood. Hello, House. 
No, go ahead. We we are following up. Yes. Okay. okay. So uh, the third, um, how projects, how can project managers use analytics in project management? Uh, all right. The third one has to do with enhancing data visual and visual and visibility and control via focus dashboard. Now, an analytics dashboard can provide a project manager a single view to look at the big picture and determine both how each project and its project can, sorry, both how each project and its project team members are doing. So you, this uh, um, dashboard shows you the picture, right? Shows you the picture of how the project is doing. And you know, that's it. So that's just that. So this information comes uh, in handy for prioritizing project tasks and or moving project team members around the maximize around to maximize their productivity so we we'll move ahead again analyzing uh, projects and portfolio for project selection and um, prioritization now project portfolio analysis is a useful application of analytics right this involves evaluating a large number of project proposal or idea and selecting prioritizing and most invisible ones within the constraint of organizational resources and other relevant factors so across all projects organization in general but but sorry in general but in a matrix organization in particular multiple projects complete for finite resources organizations must select projects carefully after complete assessment of each candidate's project feasibility based on the organizational um, project selection criteria which might include but not uh, be limited to the following factors number one technical economic legal political cap and capacity capability constraint number two cost benefits uh, uh cost benefit analysis resulting in scoring based on various financial models such as net present value uh return of investments roi you know when you do analysis be able to know all these things return of investment payback period uh breakdown analysis right so resource requirements internal resource only functional department resources cross-functional resources cross organizational resources <clears throat> or any combination of the preceding uh of the preceding so Again, external resources, both internal and external resources, project complexity, complexity, project risk, training requirements. So um, here we have the um, NV, N, NPV, which is used to compare today's investments based on present um, value for future cash flow. You know, after those cash flow are disconnected by a certain rate of return right that's which is the roi let me just move right out once i give us we'll read about that um so improve project stakeholders management the purpose of uh, um project analytics has improved um, project stakeholders management now analytics can help improve project stakeholder management by enabling a project manager to predict stakeholder responses to various project decisions project stakeholders management is both art and science arts because it depends partly on the individual skill sets now approach and personality of the individual project manager and science because it is a highly data driven process you see that now it is art uh according to um according to this uh, material which is also realistic uh, analytics can help provide project tests and stakeholders management, enable project manager to predict stakeholders' responses to various project decisions. Project stakeholders' uh, management is both art, like they say, it's both art and science. Art because it depends on part and um, partly on the individual skill sets, approach, personality of the individual project manager, and science because it is highly data driven process. You see that now. So um, if they ask you why is um, project um, uh, um, um, analytics, why do you think is more of arts and science? You need to define it. You need to see because it is arts because it is based on the the the, um, 
the skill sets approach personality and then um, the individual project manager and science because it is highly data driven right so project manager can use analytics to predict the outcome of ex execution of their strategic strategic plans for stakeholder engagement management and to guide their decision for, appro for appropriate co um, corrective actions if they find any discrepancy as variance right differences between the plan and the actual results of their efforts so whenever you see whenever you hear the word variance it has to do with minus so minus that's the differences minus right take note of that um let me move ahead so previous stakeholders management is much like customer relationship management a crm in marketing because customers are essentially among the top level project stakeholder and project success depend on their satisfaction and accept an acceptance of the project outcome i mean the product or or service demographic studies and demographic studies customer segmentation conjoint analysis and other techniques allow marketers to use large amount of um, consumer purchase survey and panel data to understand and communicate marketing strategy so a whole lot about um, analyzing data and analytics you will see that these are very very important to communicate the the next strategy even look at the, the past record what and what you, before, before you can even predict you have to look at what you what you've achieved past what was your achievement past in past uh, report and what is the present if you now you know you have to do some calculations the present and the past tend to predict the future do you understand so you have to do some pros and minus to when you bring the, the present and the past you can be able to determine the future because you must have your present and your past record or past report in order to predict what will happen next because if you don't have what if you don't have a a, a, a data of the past and you don't have the future i'm um, sorry the present you cannot tell about the future so the future is dependent on the present and the past do you understand on the past um, report or past data to determine what will happen next so let me just move ahead um concern okay uh dr rama ramakrishma 2009 discussed how crm can then help with effective stakeholders management uh according to him there are seven cs um of stakeholders management right which is concern communicate contribute uh connect compound concrete complete um, figure 1.1 1 .1 illustrates the seven cs of stakeholders management the seven cs um, or constitute seven elements of the project stakeholders management criteria which can be evaluated for their relative importance or strength with respect to uh, sorry with respect to the goal let's see these are the okay there's the goal um the crm refers to up the process or methodology used to understand the need and behavior of customer so the relation between the relationship with them can be improved and strengthened so of achieving effective sorry mm. so of achieving effective stakeholders management by utilizing the multi criteria evaluation capability of the analytics hierarchy process uh understand you can read this when i send it to you you read this you read this you read this so let me talk about the predictive projects and um, schedule and, and delay and let me talk about the, the predictive project schedule delays and cost overruns you know analysis can tell a the importance of, we are still looking at the importance of analysis right so analysis can tell a project manager whether the project is on schedule and whether it's under or over budget also analytics can enable a project manager to predict the impacts of various completion dates on the bottom line project costs right for example you have your end value analytics we will talk about that as the end value end value has to do with 
what you have achieved, right? We have n value, n value, n. What you've earned in this assignment now? What is your score? That is that is what the meaning of n value, right? But we'll talk about that. In, we'll do that in percentage uh, when we proceed to the to the practical. So what you've earned, then we have what we call PV, plan value. That plan value is um, what your plan has planned, what has been planned, right? So we'll talk about that as we proceed. Um, let me talk about manage, uh, uh, manage project risk. So the importance of uh, analytics. So another uh, another area in project lifecycle uh, where analytics can be ex ex um, extremely helpful is the project risk management area. The project risk in identif identification, ranking, and prioritizing, sorry, and prioritization depend upon multiple factors, including at least the following, as in size and complexity of the projects, organizational risk tolerance, take note of this, risk probability, impact, and horizons. Uh, the last compet and competency of the projects or risk management uh, manager. Now, you agree with me that in your projects as schedule, there are risk in that project. Like, let's take let's take for instance your procurement. You see, if you don't procure your material early enough, it will you know procurement normally take time. It will affect your program of work. It will affect what you have planned. If you, for instance, you say okay, procurement you are giving procurement three two weeks, and we we already set it that today we started today right, which is about five of um, um May twenty nine. 2023 and we've already ordered you know maybe the procurement is offshore if it delays the end date and we intend to end this procurement uh, um, activity as of let's say two weeks from now just calculate two weeks from now and if it exceeds that time that means that procure that procurement activity is a risky activity which can cause us harm if not properly uh, followed, you know, if not properly, um, uh, how, would I, how would I say it, if not properly monitored. So if you don't monitor it and it takes time more than what we have already planned from the start time to the end time, it's a risky activity. It will cause damage to our schedule. Do you understand? It will cause damage to our schedule. So there is need for that synchronization knowing when to when and when our procurement um, activity will be completed so because whatever we put in our schedule in our pieces should should be realistic whatever we put in our schedule should be realistic we should achieve it as planned as planned but if we cannot achieve it there is need for contingency and uh, plan we have to have that right you, you, you know the best way to undo risk management is to create a contingency plan. So when you have a contingency plan, it will be able to mitigate those risks. What do you do if this thing does not arrive this so time? That's just a simple thing. You have a risk risk register. What do you do if these activities is not completed in this time? That's why you create a contingency plan to mitigate those risks. Because if you don't meet up your schedule, it's, risk. it's risky. It's not healthy to the program. It's not healthy to the project. So you must create a program that must create that risk um, management um, 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 deliverable in order to know how to manage those activities that will not be come that will default, you know, the the program of work. Do you understand? So that is just that on that note. Any question, please. Any question, please. Hmm. Yes, I just have a, a little question. Uh, go ahead. From what we are learning, All right. you mentioned two key points. Knowing how to extract your data. Okay. And then analyzing. Okay. Now, I believe one comes after the other. Yeah. You should extract first because it is the data you have at hand that you will analyze. Very well. And you can only have data while you have extracted them from somewhere. Very well. So, and I believe in this class, we are going to learn both how we will extract our data mm -hmm. and then analyze the data. 
So I don't yeah. know what is it, is it what is it part of what we are learning here? That is what we're, we're, that, that's why that's why we're talking about analytics and analysis. I don't mm -hmm. know if you understand. That's why we're talking about analytics. Yes, that's where it comes to play. Analytics. Okay. You bring you bring out of you don't understand. Use your tools to do analytics and analyze mm -hmm. that data. That's why we talk about, you know, I asked us, you understand the meaning of analytics and analysis. And yes. we all got it right. Right? So that's yes. just that. So that's why it comes to play. We will use a, 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 a MS Word to do the, to drive out that process. Okay. Mm. Any other questions? Thank you. Mm. And in a promise, do you have any question? None, none for now. Please ask me question. No, ask me question. No, I'm trying my best to. I'm trying my best to summarize this. But no, when the time when the time comes, we we'll ask. Okay, I'm trying my best to summarize this book. But however, uh, I I I deem it fit to also make to I mean make us understand, not just giving us summary in one minute. I can just close it up within one hour. But I want us to have that deep understanding, and it's it's going to be a pleasure. It's going to be my great gain. To see you succeed in this field because having practical knowledge and experience in this field it's a great thing for me to pass this information nobody taught me this this thing i was telling the truth i made my research and study hard and before you know it i was able to know it so the good thing is this you have somebody that is even teaching you it makes it more easier for you than you making your research on your own you see that now so it makes it more easier for you the knowledge of how many years five five years or seven years or whatever can be brought can be broken down in three weeks or it depends and you just learn it and you just know it and keep flowing with it so that's that so please if you have question ask me i'm ready to answer so that we can progress so i haven't said that i've um, mentioned the management project risk i've talked about uh that aspect risk management is another is another um class another topic to to entirely so maybe if you want to learn about risk management we can after this class, uh, you can um, book for that. No problem. We'll, we'll talk about it. So it's a different class entirely. But I just had to integrate it and explain what it is, what, why you need that analytics, why you need to analyze your data. It helps you to prepare, um, I mean, to know the activities that, that are risky because you'll be seeing it as you're analyzing. Oh, this one will not be able to achieve this. That means that this, and so long as this one has not been able to be achieved, this activity is risky because it's not it's not going to be completed as at, as at, as planned or as scheduled and if, if for it not to be completed for it not to be completed as planned or as scheduled is a risky activity that can terminate our contracts and you know you know project is about um, signing contract and you must fulfill the rules of the contracts because it's legally binded by law so you do this why you need this analysis so that you be able to to meet up to forecast to go ahead of time Oh, in this one, if, if there is risk in this in this particular program of work on this um, schedule, what do we do? That means to say we need to have a a, a project um, 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 management analytics uh, um, um, plan, right? How to plan and manage the risk, sorry, project risk um, and management plan. So how to manage the risk, you know, on that regard, they were, we have we to pre, pre, um, prepare deliverables that will guide us in managing the risk that is tied, you know, to our project. So that is just that. Let me forge ahead. Okay, one question, sir. Go so ahead. what we are learning now is basically also telling us, or it's like telling us that after we plan using our software, mm. we have to analyze before we go and execute. No, what, what, what you have to you once you plan you have to start execute mm -hmm. analytics is something is, is a back end thing front the executing of the project okay. is the front end executing is the front end okay. analytics is back end it is your report okay. it is what is happening in your projects you are analyzing that is the back end you are analyzing the data the data are, are mm. all in the back end the people the front end, the people are, are executing those activities are in the front end, the civil discipline, everybody, they're in the front end doing the work in real time. Why the back end people, 
you are now you are analyzing the data based on what they are based on the activity in real time <clears throat> based on what is happening on the site you are okay. analyzing what is happening on the site you can be able to predict oh this and that you'll be able to, you'll be able to predict this this if you don't do this one this one will achieve this one will affect this this one you'll be able to and there are risks involved in every project so you need to know how to create a plan as a project manager to mitigate those risks so you can be able to visualize those things using your uh analytical approach to analyze whatever is happening in the project i don't know if you understand yeah what i what i just wanted to know is that i don't really need to wait to the end of the project no before i no, do no, analysis no, 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 no. so as the execution is going on you are really phase by phase stage by stage yeah i yeah. can be analyzing yeah yeah you don't need to wait as the project okay. starts as as you start your of course you know this the schedule we created is an activity on its own under your under your deliverable as um, project control yes. is that so you have to present it is an activity you've already done which is the pro, you've, you've prepared a program of work and that program is what the sites people are going to follow are going to yield to that program is what they will follow throughout that project uh, uh, phase do you understand and throughout that project phase you'll now be analyzing each 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 task yes. each each um, package i'll show us that each each pa um, task if you want to analyze based on um, a cumulative that is overall you can do that you want to analyze separate separate but for the sake of this class i will teach us the cumulative overall then from overall we can be able to know how to do individual if you want to do individual do you understand okay is it Thank clear you. is it clear is it clear please please you sounded as if you don't you don't you're not clear please just make it make it no question. no I'm, I'm clear i'm clear i'm clear are you sure if i'm not i will tell you okay please do. all right we are still looking sure. at the, uh, i'm here to learn there's no all right so we are still looking at the the importance of um analytics the importance of analyzing our data our project data so improve project process you see it improves your project process project management and involves the execution of multitude of project processes you see now you mentioned something execution uh, sorry that's the activity multitude of project um project processes thus continuous process improvement is essential for eliminating waste and improving the quality of the process processes and the product of the projects you see that now so the thus the continuous process improvement is essential for eliminating waste and improving the quality of processes and the product of the project so improving Improvement projects and typically involve four steps. Number one, understand the current situation. Take note of this. Take note of this. Very, very important. You need to understand the current situation of that project. Now, determine, secondly, determine the desired target future situation. Understand the current situation where you are. This is what we have earned. End value, EV. This is what we've earned. We have earned 30%. That is the current situation. There are some activities that are delayed based on so 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 deliverables were, are not um ready those are you are also doing analysis who are not ready that's why we're not able to achieve those ones these ones are achieved but based on where we are at this end. now determine the desired target future situation you know because desire you know them determine the, the desired um, future situation based on where you are and what you have done what you have done in the past and where you are you're able to do some calculations to be able to know where you are going, which is the future. Is that clear? Is that clear? Hello, House. No, yeah, we understand. Okay. Yeah, it's clear. So we're, talk yes. we're still talking about, the, talking about the process improvements. Then number three talks about the perform gap analysis. Find the, de the delta between the targets and the current situation. Find the data between the target and the current situations. That's that. Then before make improvement decision to address the gap. You have, you have to find the data between the target uh, and the current situation and for us to make improvement decision to address uh, the gap. So you need to be you need to be encouraging your site, your team um, site um, manager or team on the site to to be effectively they need, they need to know about this data thing you need to tell them this is where we are this is where we so you need to be motivating them so that we can be able to meet up to target because the project as planned is 100 percent 
right? Whatever you achieve, you are you are moving towards hundred percent. That is just it. As planned, it's hundred percent. So whatever you achieve on each basis, each week, because most people prefer reporting each week. But your sites, whatever can your site work can be reports can be coming on daily basis. Then you as the planner or you are the coordinator, you can be reporting on weekly basis based on what has been um, achieved on weekly basis. I don't know if you understand that. So that is that for that uh, aspect. Then make improvement decision to address um, uh, the gap. So analytics can help project managers through all four process improvement steps by enabling the use of project management, um, Lean Six Sigma blended or hybrid um, methodology for managing the project with embedded continuous improvements. So that is just that analytics can help project managers through all the process improvements step by enabling the use of project man management uh, Lean Six Sigma. These are tools, these are tools, right? Use to do your uh, analytics. So, um, program management analytics approach. Let's talk about this. Program management analytics approach can vary from organizing, from organization to organization, and even from project to project. It depends on multiple factors, including but not limited to organizational culture, policies, and procedures. Project in environments, projects, and complexity, project size. You see that, and the available, available resources, available tools and technologies, and the skills, knowledge, and experience of the project manager or project slash business analysts. That is just that. So, uh, that is just that on the um, project management analysis approach. So, it is very very important. Even business analysts also, they also they are also data analysts because they are analyzing. The the business of the um, the data of that business, right? So that is just that. So this book covers um, following approach to project management um, analytics with the statistical uh, Lean Six Sigma analytics hierarchy process. Um, later on, we we'll have to read this. Uh, have to read this on our own. You will look at the application of each this, each of these um, approaches and. The possible combination of two or more of these approaches depending upon the project characteristics right so whenever i send the book you will read through i don't think i have to go through let me take this let me take this statistic approach um throughout the project life cycle project manager must deal with a large number of uncertainties you understand you must do it on certain things have to do with things you don't know things you don't know things you don't know right that will occur of course there are things you don't know that will happen in your project so you have to be ready for that and that's why all those things can be risky that's why you need to create a risk management plan and how to mitigate those risks when it occurs so that is that so throughout the life cycle of um life uh, throughout the project's life cycle Project manager must deal with large numbers of uncertainties. You see that there are much large number of uncertainties. So, for instance, project risks are uncertainties. You see that I just mentioned that project are uncertainties that can derail the project if they are not addressed in a timely and effective way. So, if those risks in your project that are tied to your project, like your critical activity now, those activity that has um, 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 that have the tendency to cause delay in your project. If you don't address it on time and you don't address it on time it can be risky right so you must find a way right uh if they are not addressed on in time in a timely and effective way similarly similarly all project baseline plan are developed to deal with the uncertainty future of the project now the baseline plan what we have done in the last class is our baseline plan we consider that as a baseline. This is what we want to do. But believe me, you, no project is achieved as planned. In the, even, even though you are the best project manager in the world, in this world, there's something I put on LinkedIn. I said, no project is achieved as planned, even if you are the best project manager in this world. Why? Because projects are unique and there must be delay in one or two ways. The only thing, the only way you can be able to, to manipulate is to be skillful and to be flexible. 
you have to be flexible because uncertainties like this will come. How you manage these uncertainties will determine how your project will be will will you will move. You know that is it to determine how your project will be able to move from one stage to another. Your plan as planned your the way you plan your projects as it is captured in your program of work in your your pieces. It is not the way you will achieve it, but you need to strive to make effort to achieve it at least. That's why you create a risk management plan. How to manage those activities that like, if you don't meet up to those dates, what do you do? So these are the things, these are the things you consider, you look at those things and be able to move ahead. So that is just that's um that's why the project plan are called living documents. You see that living documents because they are subject to change. You see that that schedule we have already created, it's subject to change. What about if we didn't achieve most of those activities that we planned as at that time? We can change the date, okay, because we didn't achieve these dates, we have to push these dates to, uh, if let's say if it is, we are supposed to achieve it today, we are supposed to, the project has started yesterday, and today is supposed to be completed. If we didn't complete today, we have to put maybe a two more, um, we have to push um, the date ahead, Right, we have to push the data maybe in two with two days more to be completed or one day, depend. So that is just that. So that's why the project plan are called living, they are living document because they are subject to change based on the future changes. Because whatever happens in the future, it will, it will reflect the project plan. Whatever happens in the future, it will see we complete it. So because picturing the future and precisely is hard, picturing the future precisely is hard. Best estimates are used to develop the project plans statistic approach comes in handy when dealing with projects uncertainties because it includes tools and techniques that managers can deploy to interpret specific patterns in that in the data path um, in the data pertaining the project management processes to predict the future more accurately right then we have the quantitative measure of processes when the when that process is performed over and over is likely to follow a certain frequency pattern of occurrence that's a quantitative measure right in other words there is a likelihood or probability of occurrence of the same quantitative measure in the long in the long run this likelihood or probability represents the uncertainty of record re, sorry recurrence of a certain quantitative value of the process so statistical analysis can help predict uh, certain behavior uh, of the processes or systems in the environment of uncertainty, which is fundamental to data-driven decision making. I hope that is clear. So I move ahead. We are uh, we are approaching to the end. Um, I'll try as much as possible to do what I need to do. Uh, so we use the following analytics probability distribution to illustrate how statistical approach can help in effective decision making in project management normal distribution poison distribution uniform distribution and triangle distribution beta distribution. you just just go and read about this read about this it will help you in your um in your analysis why this why i'm analyzing your project data so um i don't need to i'll just give you this you have to go and read about this normal distribution this is how it is this is how it is when you plot your graph. This is your normal. This is why it is how it looks like. Uh, I won't talk much about this. Later on, you go and read about it. If I give you the material to be knowledgeable as to that. So, so the poison distribution. This is how it is. Let's assume, let's assume this uh um figures here, 0 0.2 is where we put our percent, and that was um the horizontal, right? So the vertical, the vertical line here, right, uh, will represent our percentage, which is the percentage of each activity. Then the horizontal line here in our project will represent the the dates, right? The date, the the duration of our activities, right? Then the curve here is plotting against the uh, the curve here will plot against the um, percentage right targeted to the time to the timeline of achieving those um, activity we'll see that that's when i'll, I'll drive out my s curve and we'll be able to see it um very very well so we'll read about this 
then talk about the poison distribution i'll give us this we'll just read about it i just need to move ahead uh give us uniform distribution uh, something that is um, of the same you know that's um that, that has to do with um, our bar charts we see that in our bar charts and then you know to see things in, in uniform distribution um you know formats okay these are bar charts to do that um what again in triangle distribution right so we just read about this better distribution we read about it to know what it is what it entails uh lean six sigma approach we read about it um okay the goal of every project organization in terms of projects called um outcome is success which stands for so that is success stands for smart goal established and achieved which is the s stands for smart goals established and achieved the u stands for under budget delivery outcome the c stands for communications effective effectiveness realized the c stands for core values practiced the e stands for excellence in project management achieved the s stands for schedule optimized to shorten time to delivery i love that very important then the s stands for the scope delivered as committed right so prayer manager and um, project the projects are typically undertaken to improve the status quo of a certain prevailing condition which might include an altogether missing functionality or broken function functionality these improvement efforts involve defining uh the current existing and the target conditions performing gap analysis right data between the target and the current condition so when we get this material, we'll go to read about it. So these are very, very important um, um, acronyms that we need to take note of. The dynamic circle, the meaning, define, and define, measure, analyze, improve, control. That's what we do. We define, we measure. Now, what we have done now, eh? we've already, in, in our last class, we've already defined. You understand what I'm saying? We've already defined. Well, that's what we've done. The dynamic, um, the dynamic um, circle like the project and uh, management life cycle Lindsay sigma also has um, its own life cycle called the dmic circle max stand for the following stage of the linear and uh, Lindsay sigma life cycle which is defined we've already defined our projects in our pieces the next thing we'll do is measure we'll measure it we we'll analyze then we improve we we'll control so that is the next thing we'll do as regards to what we have as um, tied to program management analytics. So you read about this to understand what and what uh, uh, each chapter is saying as regards to project management, effective project management analytics. Um, forge ahead. Okay, so uh, forge ahead. So this, this is a very interesting um, document that you need to read. To understand pre management and analytics brainstorming so let me just take this part um the pds is a um, circle project, um, project quality is an integral part of project management the knowledge of lean six sigma two and process processes arms process arm a project manager with the complete uh, with the complementary and essential skills for effective project management the core of Lean Six Sigma methodology is the iterative PDSA plan, do, study, act. You see that now? That's PDSA circle, which is very structured approach to eliminating or minimizing defects and waste from any process. Now, figure 1.8 shows the PDSA as a plan, do, study, act circle, which discusses this circle as part of our discussion on the application of the Lean Six Sigma approach in project management, right? When you apply, when you apply this, um, when you apply this Lean Six Sigma, that means you plan. You that what we are, what we are doing now, we are applying it. But it is when we do this this theoretical aspect, you are it's uh, it's enlightening you more that yes, I'm doing this thing actually. But if you don't if you don't study this material, you know that you are doing some certain things. That is one good thing about theory. So once you study this, you be also have been doing this thing. You're ignorant because you've not studied it. That's why. But once you study it, you'll be able to know, ah, I've been doing this thing. 
I don't, I never knew I would have been doing it. Most of us apply this um, Lean Six Sigma approach in our projects, but we don't know. We plan, we do, we study, we act. Do you understand? These are these are the approach, right? As tied to Lean Six Sigma, this, the, the the life cycle of the uh, 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 Lean Six Sigma approach methodology. So, Figure One Point Eight shows the the PDSE plan, do, study, and act circle, which discuss which we um sorry we will discuss this circle as part of our discussion on the application of the Lean Six Sigma approach. A program management that's plan, do, act, study. So I'll give us this material so we'll study about it um, to get more knowledge. So you plan, plan the development of plan to carry out the circle, do the execution of plan to the, um, and documentation of the observations, right? Study the analysis of the observe and collection of data. You see that now, collection of data during the execution of um, the plan do um, um plan do study right so that's just his plan do uh, and study and act plan so <clears throat> the act the next step based on the analysis results obtained during study so lean C sigma we have to go and study this to understand what it is very very important so brainstorming is part of it survey five um, five wise Right, visual uh, value stream mapping, cause and effect of uh, or fishbone or ish ishikawa diagram, Ishikawa, Ishikawa sorry, Ishikawa diagram, control charts, correlation, cost uh, um, cost benefit analysis, design of experiments, histograms, uh, histograms, Pareto charts, regression analysis right um root cause analysis these are analysis that are that are that are that uh you know you use in your project um um analytical method run charts uh, the the cpoc charts so i'll give us this story about it and um the analytical hierarchy process ah i think i'm done with this class i think i'm done with this class the major thing i've already um picked out case study city this is just a case study right of um city um, use um, uses um statistical approach to estimate cost for its pilot project this is a case study you can read about it it's a case study you can read about it you can read about it let me case study questions okay uh all right let me ask some question okay let me just switch ahead i've already asked why analytics why is it a different thing? You can answer this one yourself, um, but you just need to sincerely study it, like, just like the previous class. Please, let's practice. It is very important. If you don't practice this thing, it will go off your head. Though. It will go off your head. So uh, I think this brings me to the end of um, this class. This is the end of our class today. All right. So this is just the end of the class today. Thank you very much for participating. If you have any question, please omit your mic and proceed. This is just the end of the class. It's just a high level summary, summary whatever. But um, however, I did my best to, you know, um, do justice in bringing some um, terms to our understanding. So thank you very much. If you have any question, proceed and ask your question. Okay, thank you very much from here. Um, I appreciate the preamble or introduction to it. Uh, for me, I, I, I can say you are owing us two documents from today's class. Who's this that? present one that I seen on the screen. Okay. And uh, I think to my, as I'm looking at my screen to my right on mm -hmm. your window, mm -hmm. the next title, project management, I'm sure it's analytics. If you click on it, should be to your left on your window. No, I'm not in document. That is the same thing. It's no, it's no. not the same one. No, I'm not giving that you one. Looks like no, 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 no. I'm not giving. I'm not giving you that one. What? What now? Wait. I'm, I'm, I'm giving. No, 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 Jamaica. I'm not giving you that what document. Now, wait. Oh, is it because you I displayed on the screen? The, wait, wait, wait. You are the one with the mouse and your laptop. I, I'm not going to from here. Took my hand over there and mm. collect it. I'm only saying my own. Fine. You will explain or you will give 
you make your choice. So it's all right. it's you're already right. tackling me as if uh, the one that is important. You, you that's really what I'm giving you. No problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. No the problem. one that is important but, is what I'm well, giving you. You know, you started with that. It, it looked like uh, WBS. So that's why I made attention that. But Which one is the WBS? There's no picture. Okay. No problem. Uh, so what do we need to come with to class tomorrow? Just our laptop and Excel on it, I guess. Yes. Um, come with your laptop. Uh, come with your yeah, come with your laptop as well as you ask if you can write in your laptop, fine. If uh, you can just something, fine. Okay. So okay. also um like um the the previous um work we did, I will also share it with us. The primavera and stuff. Eh? I will share my own. I don't know if your I don't know if your own is, is the same thing with my own. But if there is if there is a uh, differences, don't worry. I will share the raw file. That is the advantage of this class. I'm going to share the raw file just the way it is being scheduled in my own with the one I have here. And I will also share whatever I will do as based on the analytics, analyzing those data. I will share it with you. That's advantage. So that's just the advantage you people have here in this class. I will share it with you. Others, I'm not going to give them that primavera. They create it with them by themselves. And that is just that you can be able to, anytime you want to play around with it, you can play around with it and then and we'll have something for a guy. Uh -huh, okay. Yes, that is it. So, okay. any question? Okay, I let me ask another question, just to ask. Okay, sir, go ahead, Mister Promiser. Hey. No, just uh, not not question per se. So, I uh, have uh, we. So, what I say is that this uh, the whole thing you've gone, you you've been able to uh, a kind of. Uh, Teach us today. We we may need to just go through it before tomorrow's class, right? You have to study, yes, sir. But it, it, that tomorrow class is based on is more of, is um you know this is theory. Theory can, it can be you can have plenty of grammar, but in the practical, everything will be summarized. Do you understand? Okay. And everything will be okay. summarized, just like all those um curve. We we'll, we we'll do all those curve. But what we we'll do first of all is to is to get our um, 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 PMS, our progress measurement system. Right from our progress okay. measurement system, we can be able to now draft out our curve. We will do our EV, our end value and plan value. What has been planned? What is planned? What are the activities that are planned? Then what 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 is end or what will end as based on the project um, you know um, and process flow. So that is just on that note. So you need to also study this book because. It will also give you a theoretical. It will give you a, a, a foundational understand a foundation, and it's a foundation actually an understanding of what you are doing when you start analyzing your projects. It will give you that no that in depth knowledge theoretically you will to know because project is all about project management is all about knowledge, knowledge skill, knowledge. It is knowledge now you have now. The skill now is what we will now do tomorrow. We we'll practice it. How to drag that data? That is the skill. Because of the knowledge I have via, um, by the by the means of reading or studying most of this material, I can be able to now skillfully use my tool to do what I've read. Do you understand? That is project management. Okay. I, I don't know if it's clear. Yeah, it's okay. Mm, so it's okay. So that is just that on that notes. Uh, Engineer Michael, do you have anything else to say? Uh, no relief. I do. I will maybe ask tomorrow. You know, I ask question now. Ah, yeah, I still have you tomorrow and next, so you are not running away. Uh, okay. The, the truth is, we apart from practicing the tools, we have a lot of materials to read. Yeah, and I, I don't see it a bit visible that you will finish reading the material like the two books you gave us. For the okay. first class, okay. some of them now run some the pages. Yeah. If one want to say, I want to read those pages first before I start doing the practice yeah. on the software. Mm. The old, the many months of the year, <laughs> you will not finish what we are busy. So that's where it comes to play appreciating recording the class. That one give us yeah. a quick preamble. But uh, I wanted you to again to reecho it to our engineer, sir, Mr. Promise here. You said this class we are having, this one, 
we're having now oh that will go 